All right, welcome back to Banner Talk. And today we have a special guest, Caleb Dawkins, one of the busiest men in Las Vegas at the time. And we have a couple of topics that we're going to go over. I definitely want to talk about some open AI source and some sports media. Yeah, no, glad to be on the show. Even better to have you out here in Las Vegas. Finally. I know it's hot as hell, but uh, shout out to Sticky Paws for allowing us to, to use this space um to be able to dive into some of these topics a bit deeper but um yeah let's get into it definitely shout out to sticky paw studio and for the great collaboration and the great hospitality always much appreciated thank you all right so yeah first i want to get your thoughts on a wave that we're seeing in the music industry or just in music general um we've come across a lot of social media videos mm -hmm. and YouTube videos using open AI, whether it's Biggie and Tupac doing niggas in Paris, whether it's Kanye West doing a multitude of songs. And we've got a couple of sources saying that Universal Music Group has asked streaming services to block any of the AI songs. And we recently had a hilarious interview from Ice Cube saying he will sue <laughs> the hell out of whoever uses his voice. Um, I definitely want to just dig a little bit deeper on the business aspect, on the possibilities of AI taking over the music industry. I know that's a big topic right now and a big fear for maybe some artists, especially up and coming artists. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, they're re-earthing some, some dead legends as well and putting them on some, some newer songs, which, <laughs> It, it, it kind of, I don't know. I don't know how it sounds. We've got some songs that sound better. Like There's some Rihanna stuff out there that sounds better than the original version. Yeah, the, the Rihanna uh, Taylor Taylor Swift remakes are been yeah. one of my favorite. Yeah, sorry, Taylor, but Rihanna got you on that one, okay? Um, no, I mean, this whole open AI thing has been a big deal. I, I guess let's take a step back. So um prior to coming to, back to vegas i was actually in san francisco um and open ai the community uh, the, the company is ran by a man by sam altman sam altman actually uh used to work uh for an incubator fund for like tech startups called Y Y combinator okay. um essentially uh he had did an interview with a couple of members of our team and he was just talking about like the evolution of ai and pretty much what he was breaking down was um, think about like the, the horse. So back in the day, prior to like Henry Ford creating the car, right? And he said prior to the car, there was a significant increase in the population of horses, right? And this is like 2017, Chad GPT was not created. He had just recently stepped down from Y Combinator. And he's just talking about what is the what is the impact on AI on just humans in general? So then he goes to this whole concept of like the horse, right? And he's like, when the car, the automobile was invented, the population of horses drastically decrease. Then he follows that statement with saying, AI is the car and human beings are the horse. And that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so I, I go back to my office thinking about kind of this concept of what he's saying, but I'm also like looking at my computer screen like, yo, we, we've been in through this. I, I was always been a, a nice person. So if you ever get to a point to where you're smarter than me, just like look out and just don't exterminate me from the planet <laughs> of Earth. But like now that we're diving into like music, I think a lot of people think about open AI as like automating tasks, things like kind of in like the corporate world doing like call services and things, but not necessarily the arts. But like now, as soon as open AI drop, you have all of these Instagram pictures that have been drafted by AI by like using different artists and you could create an avatar, which I think was interesting. But now you're going to the music. And now the thing that I find it about music is that uh, prior to coming into the finance world, I used to be at uh, Warner Chapel and like the publishing side of it. And what we would do is we would look at samples and essentially go after anybody that uses a sample and make sure that if they're using a song that's a part of our publishing portfolio that we get paid off of that. Um, I was also the person that would go into YouTube and if there was any music playing in the background, then we would pull the YouTube off because that YouTube video is getting advertisement revenue off of music that's sitting in the publishing. But now you have open AI that essentially can write music. 
So like right now, if you go into ChatGPT, you could essentially say, hey, ChatGPT, I want you to write me a 16 bar verse of Tupac, this and Biggie, and it'll literally write write it for you. Yes. Um, is it the best? Like, no. But I mean, this is like the very beginning stages of like what this could do. So as more data is created and the evolution of like the AI technology increases, I'm pretty sure OpenAI could probably be one of the dopest rappers in our generation and we wouldn't even know it. But now you're adding the element of like, now you can use people's voices. I think two things about this is that one, I think it gives some of the underground artists an opportunity to be able to use some of like a Drake or a Kendrick Lamar or somebody that's been featured on a song to kind of showcase like, hey, like I actually vibe well, or like I can create a concept and I actually can uh, deliver lyrics that'll be dope with a feature like Drake or a Kendrick Lamar. Um, but it also makes me think of like, why would a record label even need, need an artist? I mean, at this point, you have AI that could write the verse. Yeah, we could recreate voices, but just as much as we could recreate a voice, we could actually create a brand new voice. Um, and with some of the other technology, like um, the uh, the Tupac hologram things, you could essentially create a new artist. So like right here in Las Vegas, um, they're building pretty much what looks to seem like a Death Star, um, which is the, the MSG sphere. And if you actually go into the space, um, it's like a planetarium on like steroids, times 50, super massive, 4D, you could feel the temperature and things such as that. Like that space right there is like a prime example of if you wanted to see an artist that literally does not exist, that is literally only artificial intelligence, it's like it's here already. So I'm saying what comes of the music industry? Will there be new artists? Will it be more difficult for like human artists to kind of get in the game given that now you're competing against computers, utilizing data um, of just music since its existence that we've been able to kind of like comprehend and, and observe since recordings have been happening. So like, I think it makes it a little bit more difficult, but like coming from a listener, maybe it's just better for the listener. Maybe they're just creating more music um, that, you know, we could vibe to, but I'm saying from the perception of an artist, somebody that actually creates art, I do believe that it is kind of a headwind to kind of the evolution of like what a human artist could do in the future. So like, I mean, you, you've been, you've listened to a lot of music, you've deciphered albums, broke down lyrics, like kind of what, what are your thoughts? I on think, that? I think that the personal aspect of an artist is the most important aspect right mm -hmm. so like what you're bringing up is we're we're looking at from maybe a record label standpoint what's the value of a person versus what's the value of what we can create mm -hmm. you know so the labels are essentially creating a lot of artists already as it is mm -hmm. But um, when we get into AI, when they can create a person from scratch, like you're saying, mm -hmm. what kind of fan base is that going to bring? Is there that personal touch? Are we going to be still doing meet and greet? So a fan like me, mm -hmm. for example, a Kendrick Lamar, or it could be like back in the day with Dr. Dre. If mm -hmm. you're from those areas, there's always that aspect of they're from where I'm from and I could bump into them, or they've been on the, the same street that I'm driving down. If we, we're talking about, we grew up on Rosecrans. Right, right, right. That, that is a, you know, that's a street that a lot of West Coast artists can mention. Like identify with. So we yeah. have that connection. Right. Um, and I know it can be said in the music with an AI, but knowing that that's not a real person, yeah. do I have that personal connection? And especially do I have that personal connection enough to buy a ticket to a show? Yeah. Uh, would we want to see a, a Tupac show, you know, a Tupac hologram show in, you know, what could be an amazing show, mm -hmm. but is there that personal aspect to it? Right. Knowing that you're not looking at that person on stage, it is a hologram. Mm -hmm. How do I get that feeling, that gut feeling or that feeling in my heart where I have some type of connection to this person, whether it's your listener and that artist has changed your life, helped you out of a, a tough time. Yeah. Or like for us, 
50 Cent not raised us, but that's a soundtrack to our childhood. Right, right. If we ever bump into that person, that's a that's a special moment. If I go to an AI concert with 50 Cent, am I going to have that same feeling? Yeah. No, I think the yeah. personal aspect is like super important and just kind of looking from a business perspective, like music, the streaming is not necessarily making that much money. It is the shows. Mm. Um, I guess to that point, what is it to say in terms of like, you know, integrating the current artists and having your ghostwriter be AI, you know? Um, I think in some ways it, it leverages for the artists, but I still believe that for some of these individuals that are making millions upon millions of dollars selling the art, they should be the best, you know, they should essentially be the best of their era for what they do. I mean, it only makes sense. If you're like Joe Shamo from off the street, you know, what makes sense for that person to be famous and make a lot of money versus the other person. And the reason why I say that is because, for example, in my view, like rappers need to have lyrics. Like I feel that as a rapper, you need to have bars because you're not technically, you don't, you don't have to have a voice. Like voice is super important to it, but not as important as like a singer. So like Beyonce, she gets a lot of her stuff ghostwritten. But the reason why is because she sings, she dances, she has a lot of more elements to it rather than kind of like uh, the rapper. And I mean, this is, again, my personal view. So now if you're taking an element where you have like a ghostwriter or AI that's writing a lot of that, that stuff for you, I feel like in some, in some aspects of it, it, it watered down it, it kind of waters down like the significance of that artist. That artist is not as dope. Kendrick Lamar is amazing. J. Cole is amazing is because they're they're writing, you know, writing a lot of their stuff. Not saying that they're writing 100 percent of it, but, you know, good, maybe 90 percent of it is coming from them, them concepts. So, like, when I'm relating to an artist, can I actually relate? You know, yeah. am I relating to Kendrick Lamar himself or is this like another piece, you know? And I, I guess from a a consumer standpoint, people that are not, re you know, like reading, breathing music as much and just using it to listen to, maybe it's not that important, but for something like your diehard hip hop fans that really want to vibe, really dissect the lyrics, I think that's a, like a, a important component because if it's truly personal and that interaction is important, it's like, who am I in interacting with? You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, if that, if that makes a lot of sense. Definitely. And I, I think that a lot of the label execs, or it could be the, the figureheads of the label, can they really bring you into that world like an artist? Mm -hmm. Are they living in that environment enough to give them the amount of details that are needed to connect with people? Yeah. You know, they I could see a label creating someone mm -hmm. as far as ghostwriter, like you said, or even image and just having a person who is maybe a good performer mm -hmm. not as good as writing lyrics yeah you know maybe the voice is there maybe it's not yeah and you have another millie vanilli <laughs> you know yeah. thing going right and they're just on stage they're just meeting people but literally everything else is done by ai yeah i could see that happening whether or not i i see an ai person completely taking over because i mean I'm not going to act like the gorillas don't exist, right? Right. The right. gorillas exist. The gorillas do shows and they sell out shows. Right. And they have a huge following. Right, right, right. They're not real people. So, you know, there are examples of things there, um, like a Millie Vanilli, like a gorillas, but do I see it becoming the norm? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. And But like you said, we're just in the beginning of this. Yeah. If we look at a uh, iPhone that came out in 2007, versus the iPhone now, it's it hasn't been that long, you know, we're yeah. on iPhone 14, but... And it's pulling from data. And one of the things yeah. that people are not necessarily understanding is that 90% of the data that has ever been created has been like and created in like the last decade. Yeah, I think it's even less than that, less than the two years. And your AI is only gonna be as important as the data that's behind it to reinforce it. But I guess now this is like the beginning stages of it as this AI like evolves i believe that it could be regenerative ai meaning essentially it teaches itself it writes its own code so like 
I'm just I'm just kind of curious to see what the next level is. Definitely. I mean, I think our generation is definitely important in terms of interacting and having that personalized relationship. But like if you're thinking like Gen Z, you know, you know, kids, the COVID era where they pretty much were locked down and were buying virtual clothes on like gaming and stuff like that. Is it going to be as important to them? And again, I believe labels are not necessarily focusing on kind of the current generation, but they're looking and planning for like future generations. So that's why I feel like, yeah, that might be important to us. But I think by the time where they're actually there and they can actually spend money into the music, we're going to be the people saying, well, back in my day, we used to listen to like real people. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, Which is, it'll be different. And I think it's very difficult for us to comprehend or understand what the evolution of that's going to look like. But I mean, um, you mean your your mind can wonder and ask like what what is art in general and i mean we're primarily focusing on like hip hop and music but like what about dj's you know yeah. like i was just at a, a steve aoki event um and everybody talks about like how some of these big dj's already pre-record their stuff but like right now like with the sync button and all of those elements like i'm pretty sure ai could essentially take a track and it's it's numbers it's literally numbers um B, bpm like you can do all of that it's a mathematical equation where essentially you can tell which songs sync up um versus not so i'm saying like dj's edm other genres of music like what is the evolution of that i mean like rap is one thing but i'm just saying music in general you know like that's that's one of the big questions um that i really have you know yeah, definitely and do you feel like for example Uh, what I brought up earlier with Ice Cube and Universal Music Group, do you feel like it can be blocked? Or do you feel like it will be blocked? Or do you feel like the labels will kind of push it to the side until they can be profitable? I believe that if there's money to be made, if there's money to be made, the labels will figure out a way, if that's finding new technology to understand that if something was pulled, like, for example, Jake is going through a lawsuit right now um, because of the whole song, him using his voice. Um, If there's money to be made and you have a song that's going to blow up, yeah, they're going to come. They're going to come for you. Just like right now, there's a lot of producers that are out there that are sampling all types of stuff and they're not paying the stat rate for it because, again, it doesn't make sense. So when I was a, a, a publisher on the publishing side, what we would do is we look at uh, the top 10 billboard charts. And if any of the songs were using a sample um, from there, we would essentially go to whoever that artist management in and say like, hey, you owe us a check. Um, So like maybe for some of the songs that don't go viral, but for those big songs where it's like AI and you use Ice Cube, but yeah, like he's for sure going to come after you because there's money to be made. Um, And I think uh the the evolution is like i feel like there will be ai if there's not already that can detect if it's ai or not so like right now college campuses have already used um detection types of services to where they could detect if a, a a research paper was written by ai or not so i believe there's some type of technology that could essentially determine if like the voice is ai um or if it's music or like Curious to see that if you take an Ice Cube voice um, and let's say that you took like Ice Cube's actual like recording, but then you laid over whatever the AI technology is over the voice, if we could see any difference, if that makes sense. Yes. So take like a real like uh, today was a good day, you know what I'm saying? Or a good day. Take his actual vocal. So take the stems from that track put the AI technology over it, would it still sound exactly like him? You get what I'm saying? And if there's any difference in that, then I'm pretty sure there will be some type of AI technology to kind of be able to determine like, yeah, that's for sure AI. And again, if there's money to be made, the record labels will definitely find a way um, to get, I mean, they invented the 360 contract for a reason to get yeah. paid, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. And I was surprised Using AI for my first time, I used ChatGPT for a recent reel just to kind of throw something out there and see how it went for the top five albums of a decade. Mm-hmm. 
and it was extremely accurate for what what would be the consensus among mm -hmm. hip hop fans, you know? And of course, I don't think it it pulled any from the underground. It was kind of looking at the popular, but it was extremely accurate for the '90s and for the '80s. It was it was kind of scary, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, I was expecting at least one to miss. Yeah, and Illmatic, The Chronic, yeah, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, yeah. You know, it pulled those albums yeah. as like a top five, and I was kind of like, oh. Well, see, the key thing about it is the way that it works is it uses, and this is just, again, I'm like not an AI expert, but like based off of the, the just little knowledge that I know is that it looks through a lot of data and it finds commonalities between the data searches. So the fact that, the fact that it's not, um, like again, that it's not distinct to what like we would expect or what people say is not surprising to me only because most people say like here are the top albums. I think the scary part is when it does become distinct because when AI does look at other data sets or terms like actually Lauren Hill is probably not a rap album mm -hmm. or like maybe like this is question like the like humans have been saying like, hey, this is what the top are but like upon like you know more investigation i actually question that um that's where i think is the more scary part because like right now it's just looking at a whole bunch of data and it's like kind of like the control f function on a microsoft word document what is the most common top five what does keep coming up and then it pretty much creates scripts around that but like once it once it starts thinking and formulating opinions like actually you know Tupac is better than Biggie, and this is why. Or you know what I'm saying? Whatever it's looking at, and that's why when it's doing that, I'm curious to see what is the data set that it's pulling from. Um, so like, I mean, I mean, there's still a lot of questions to be asked as it as it relates to, to music, music industry, AI, what it's going to impact. Um, so I guess we'll see in like the next two to three years. Yeah, it's definitely moving fast. That's for sure. I mean, because if this if it's the case to where I could get signed off of having OpenAI be my ghostwriter, like put me on right now. <laughs> I, I could hold, write a whole blueprint right now and don't even rap it. Just take my voice and then we'll just have somebody automate the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's scary, but I also think that it is going to revolutionize of what like music is going to be. It might be difficult for the artist, but from a listener's perspective, it's really going to push the envelope in terms of like things that we like and we listen to. You know, it'll be a lot more easier to experiment with different concepts, um, you know, different uh, themes for an album and things such as that. So like if we use it from as a tool and a resource. Uh, I think it allows some of the the best artists that we know to be able to put out body, you know, great works of body that maybe couldn't have given like the resources that were provided back when like hip hop was just started. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah, I think the the Gen Z aspect of it is probably one of the most interesting because, like you said. I don't think they long for that physical connection as much yeah. as the other generations because yeah. they're they're followers of like the YouTube stars and yeah. you know they rather talk to their friends on the video game rather than I mean Travis Scott going did a, a concert festival in Fortnite and yeah. everybody was going crazy about that. Yeah. Um so I, I'm I'm saying like that right there is just kind of an example and that was before Chat GPT or anything like that. So like I would not be surprised if, you know, the pandas or whatever, I mean, you name it, AI or whatever comes up with like, hey, we, you know, we're dropping a, a festival in Web3. Because like, that's another thing about this. Like you have ChatGPT, we're talking about AI in the real world, but we're also forgetting the whole aspect of art, like not artificial intelligence, but just like um, virtual reality. Yes um with the you know facebook or meta coming out with the goggles and and then that whole thing so like putting those two together not only can you create a new artist but you essentially can create a new world um so that's why i'm saying i wouldn't be surprised if you had an artist that didn't exist that was just literally just data and doing festivals i mean right now people are buying jerseys in 2k for 30 dollars 
Yeah. And you don't even get to rock it. Like, it's just literally a, a virtual, a digital jersey. So I'm saying, and this is Gen Z. This is my younger brother asking me if he could get a jersey, a throwback. And I'm thinking I'm about to go to, like, a Foot Locker or something like that. And we over here on 2K, and he's trying yeah. to get it off of a game. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense to them. Yes. So, like, going to a virtual concert, I mean, who, like, I wouldn't be surprised. It might be crazy, but uh, in the future... I, I don't I don't see it I don't see it too surprising. Yeah, and raising a Gen Z myself, instead of regular allowance, she wants Robux. Exa- exactly. And I'm like, you could save your allowance and buy something nice, right? But right. you want to spend the money on a hat in Roblox. Exactly. Um, which is which is insane. So like, I would not be surprised as this is taken off and again this is right now we're not even talking a decade from now and if you just look at the evolution of an iphone over 10 years or just phones in general over a decade like it's it's insane and technology only exponentially uh gets better and better over time you know um what i'm curious is like we're talking about kind of music but like what do you think about this whole open ai like within sports so, like, uh, the reason why I bring it up, uh, I forgot what the, the name of the movie was, um, but it was about the Oakland A's. Um, shout out to the Oakland A's, now the Las Vegas A's that are coming into town. But their whole thing was using, um, it was a guy that was from, he had, a, he had pretty much a financial background, but what he was looking at is, like, values of different players to where, how can I spend the least amount of money on a contract but get the best value out of a player to create a World Series team. So essentially, if I don't want to be the New York Mets or the New York Yankees, that just pretty much has a ridiculous amount of budget to kind of like buy players, how how can I impact that? But like now this is a human being. So like what if like I'm just curious to see like if we're thinking about like GMs that are looking through different players, scouts, scouts, data and stuff like that. It's like, is that a job or can we actually get rid of that and like how does you know how does that look people are already betting data is out there you could look at percentages and things such as that is ai going to determine what the future nba team is are they using it right now you know what i'm saying like i'm curious to kind of like like hear your thoughts on that and that was a big wave in the nba with like advanced analytics and yeah and how they were putting together teams over kind of like the last decade or so. Yeah. Um, I believe that scouts are in trouble, Mm -hmm. definitely. And it's tough because in the NBA, there's also that that personal aspect as well Mm -hmm. to some extent, Not, not, not every time. But if you look at, for example, when you're building a dynasty, let's let, let's just take yeah. let's take dynasties an example. Like like how you said, you you want to be the Yankees or you know the the Mets or the Red Sox without spending the money, right? But a lot of times those relationships are what keep the team together, right? 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 If you're looking at just hey, this person, their analytics just doesn't match up with that other person, and I mean. It's probably going to keep clutch, you know, into yeah. perspective as yeah. well. Because look at Jimmy Butler right now, for right. example. Jimmy Butler is not a normal player, but right. he's you know barely an All Star during the regular season, and in the playoffs, he turns into an all time playoff performer. Right, right. You know, uh, but let's look at something like the San Antonio Spurs of the two thousands, or let's say Kobe with the Lakers mm-hmm. or even the Warriors, those personal relationships have kept those teams together, mm-hmm. right? And over time, the Warriors went through a lot of injuries. Mm-hmm. Will you listen to the AI when it says Clay's not producing at the the clip that you know he used to produce at? Right. And you can get, uh, I'm just throwing a name out there, you can get a Tyler Hero. Right, right who, you know, has bigger bursts of scoring, which is not probably not true. I'm just throwing a name out yeah, there. Yeah. But if you do that, are you throwing off the chemistry? And so there's like a lot of like, I guess, the human aspect of it that it's not necessarily taken in. The only thing I guess, 
my question is that is like like you'll hear different like you'll hear different like interviews and stuff like that, and a lot of people hated playing with Jordan and Kobe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're complete assholes, yeah. um, but they had kind of like that killer instinct to really push. Um, so I'm curious to see like yeah, I think chemistry is very important. Like uh, again, we've seen some of these like insane teams that have been brought together that are supposed to like win championships you know mm -hmm. like lakers with like westbrook and all of these different players carmelo anthony and all of that stuff again they were the greats at different time but like on paper it's like yo you have like a, a superstar team but it just didn't pan out or yeah. like kobe dwight howard steve nash when they had that year which is like yo this is ridiculous yeah we're taking health into consideration and and those were healthy players up until that point they only played 12 games together exactly so like looking at things like that i i think that's a a, a good point but I guess in terms of chemistry, and the only the reason why I, I bring this up is, have you seen the new movie Air? Yes. With Michael Jordan. And um, there was that one scene where he keeps replaying that, uh, that, that clip. And he keeps replaying the clip. And he's like, and he's analyzing the video. And that video, that clip that uh, he was watching was like, this is our guy. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he said this was our guy is because he pretty much analyzed it where it was like Jordan was like had had the guts to say like, yo, give me the ball. I'm taking the shot. And that's just human a analytics right there. Throwing it like, you know, this is like a Hail Mary. This may be a reach. But I'm saying who's to say that analyzing high school footage, middle school footage, professional footage that you can't determine if this man is a killer like Jordan or a good guy like yeah. LeBron, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. And I can see, I, I brought up the chemistry argument earlier. And now that I'm thinking about it, I could see an AI would like, okay, you have this many type A personalities. You need this many type B personalities to offset that. Well, I'm saying maybe in terms of like the draft, you take a personality mm -hmm. test or something like that. Yeah, and the NFL is big on personality tests. Exactly. So I'm saying it's like it's stuff that's already been created. Now you just kind of have to put it in data mm -hmm. um, and pretty much analyzing it. Like I'm curious. Matter of fact, what we should do is we should go to ChatGPT and say, hey, if you were to in, in put together – an all-star NBA team to win the next, you know, 2024, 2025 um, championship or whatever, next championship, what players, 15 players in the NBA would you pick right now? Yeah. Um, and then why? And I'm pretty sure to, whatever it would do, it, it would pull something together. Yeah. Um, but, like, again, it's changing every industry, not just music, but sports like anything that we've seen as entertainment as we know it and it could be a good thing but i also feel like it takes kind of the fun the human element out of it yeah i actually did some uh, kind of fun here for you too i'm going to pull it up on the screen up here in a second but i i i googled the 10 bar verse uh for biggie and tupac on on chat gbt uh-huh and i did the same thing for the the little roster that you talked about let me just get this pulled up here for you. But yeah, it, it's it's crazy the way that this is all like worked out, and it's it's as fast as you saying it, dude, and me typing it in. Thirty seconds later, boom. Yeah, it's nuts. So who we got? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to connect this to you. Right, but see, that's second. my point right there. It's just like. We're over here talking about this. They already created the the next dream team in yeah. a matter of seconds. <laughs> and you know what? I, I think teams will probably play the percentage too. Like let's say if you do pull like the chat GPT and the argument I used was the dynasties. But if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, mm -hmm. will you not take Let's say if you try to put that team together and it says it gives you a 70% chance of success. Yeah. Will you not take that chance on, you know, maybe having one championship for your, you know, team? Right. Look at the Sacramento Kings. They went almost 20 years without being in the playoffs. Right. I think a lot of those teams um, that, that have a lot to gain from that yeah. will, will 
be more willing to take that chance as well. All right. So here's the here's the list for you. So I said the exact same question. If you're to put together an all star NBA team to win a championship, who would you pick and why? Steph Curry, his exceptional shooting ball handling ability to create in space. Kawhi Leonard would be the shooting guard. LeBron James at small forward. Giannis Antetokounmpo at power forward and Jokic at center. Yeah. Coming off the bench, KD, James Harden, Anthony Davis, Luka Doncic, and Damian Lillard. And I mean, it gives a little description, but yeah. if we wanted it to give more, it yeah. definitely could. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And then, and, and that if is you want pretty much to. the 10 best players in the league almost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that, that's insane. But I guess like. That's the 10 bar verse there. Hold on. What we got? I'm spinning fire. Yeah, yeah. Go See, for it. Go for it. So I'm spinning fire. Watch me blaze the track. Dissing Tupac. I'm here to break his back. Claiming he's the greatest. But it's all a facade. Biggie's the king. Tupac's just a fraud. Uh, <laughs> so Chris. the thing is, Throw is like away eight mile bars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, like the thing is, is like it could have the concept of rhyming, but like when yeah. you look at it in a way, I guess its delivery is very important. Yeah. Um, it kind of comes off a bit corny. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like w- one of the things that I ha- haven't done yet, but the 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 output is only as good as the information that you're putting into it yeah um so if you were to put like hey write me a tupac this on biggie at a song that's 150 beats per minute um i want the theme and the vibe to be similar to i don't know hit him up if mariah carey was the right or something like that yeah um what would it what it would what would it be like so i think the input is just just as much but like that's what i'm saying it's like it could write a verse it could write a song would i listen to it probably not yeah and what i see from from that verse is a lot of people putting that in just to kind of survive the writer's block yeah I mean, and then you can kind of, yeah, yeah, you can, you can kind of piece together. It's just kind of giving you some ideas. Yeah. Okay. Now, but instead of saying this, I'm going to say that. Yeah. You know, is it cheating though? I mean, I'm a hip hop purist. So, yeah. But see, that's my thing is like, I remember when I used to write bars, we didn't have chat GPT, but we would have like, hey, Google, like what rhymes with thing or what rhymes with orange. And it would give you a you could break it down by syllables mm-hmm. like is that cheating um no because i think at some point you're doing you're doing your own research with that right and mm-hmm. now chat gpd is doing the research for you right so i mean there's always that argument right are, are we talking are you going to make a top 10 hip-hop artist list or are you trying to look to make a top 10 mc list right right that's right. a different list altogether yeah you know there are some people who are top 10 artists yeah. that could never sniff a top 10 MC list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would that disqualify you just like a ghostwriter would? Possibly. Yeah. But it, like you said, if you're if you're writing 80, 90% of your stuff, do most people get a pass? Of course. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. It's like I really feel like as it pertains to rap music, you like you, and this again is just kind of based off of the music that I listened to, how I was raised, the era of the music that was coming out, is like you have to have bars. It's like just from like, just like pure like financial, like Michael Jordan is a billionaire, you know? I know we're going back between sports and music, but Michael Jordan is a billionaire because he's literally one of the greatest players on the face of the earth. You know what I'm saying? He's had a foundation. He's had a foundation. from that. LeBron is a billion one of the only billion i think what the first billionaire to make a billion be a billion dollars net worth and still be in the game is because like argue you know regardless kobe jordan the arguments is like he's still an amazing player like he is different he's just different than anybody else that's ever played the game of basketball but then if you have a little uzi vert it's like i've just i can't sit there and argue that he is it doesn't it i don't understand why like why him to be like why him to tour and stuff like that it's like what is great 
about what he is doing that that makes him stand out from like the next dude that's right now in his garage probably writing the next greatest album of our generation that we don't know yet you know what i'm saying yeah definitely and i i agree like you said sports and sports and music are kind of almost hand in hand it's a different type of talent but right um jay-z is not a billionaire without hip-hop right 50 Cent isn't doing the things that he's doing without hip hop first. Right, right. Um, to answer the Little Uzi Vert question, I think Little Uzi Vert is built more off of personality. I got a great personality when I'm sitting here with you. It, <laughs> like, I feel like I have a dope personality. And that's and, and I don't mean that with like disrespect, but I'm saying there's a lot of people that have dope personalities. Definitely. But like, why him? I feel like there has to be something about like there has to be something about the talent if i feel as a listener and i and i say that like if little uzi is watching this it's like yo straight up hit me up bar for bar i think i could go with little uzi bird like i feel confident with saying that no ai no ghostwriter let's go bar for bar i feel like i would be able to 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 write something like that better and i feel like as a listener if you feel that, like Jay Z, I don't know. Nas, nah. Kendrick Lamar, don't want that. <laughs> I do not want none of that smoke. But that opens up a different conversation, right? Yeah. So, Little Uzi Vert is, and I mean this with respect as well. I see him more as a pop star. Yeah. You know, he use his music is, it's hip hop, but mm -hmm. it's it, it kind of leans on the towards like towards the way of like alternative hip hop. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I think I think Uzi Vert's star power yeah. surpasses his music, mm -hmm. and he connects with Gen Z on a different level as well. So that's where the thing where I kind of like take steps back because what I feel like is like back in the day when our parents were listening to music and we were listening like get rich or die trying and he was talking about all this crazy stuff like that and like you would have our parents to say like yo are you really listening to this crap like i remember yeah. when we used to listen to curtis blow when <laughs> all of this stuff and i think that's another element that we're not necessarily taking consideration i think my opinion is going based off of what i like what i'm used to whereas this whole other generation um is being defined you know, by by something else, meaning like what I might rock with is not what, you know, my little brother may rock with. Um, and that's one of the elements that I guess I can't speak to. I just feel like I want to be that the two old dudes on a podcast again yeah. saying, you know, back in my day. Guy guy <laughs> under 30 talking about back in my day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but again, you know, I just think it, it for me, just based off of what we've been raised on, I think there's some element of the of the music, there's some talent of like, you get to be great, you get to live this lifestyle because you are something different than everybody, one of your, you know, of your, like of mm -hmm. your kind. But I'm honestly to the point to where like, I really think record labels could take anybody and make them into a superstar, especially if you have, if you have that technology that's, you know, behind it, you yeah. know? Um, but I feel like, I don't know, me personally relates, it's that personal part of it is where I, I like, I relate to like the ludicrous who was like selling CDs out of the, the trunk of his car. Cause he, he was, you know, he was a dope rapper, but he also had like the passion rather than the record label. Like, Hey, you have the look, so we're going to make you into a yeah. superstar. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and again, I wonder if that is going to define, you know, what we, like what we seem to be great of like what music do they push to the to the forefront versus music that hey I don't really like that like Spotify for 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 existence like Spotify is based off of algorithm mm -hmm. for some reason it keeps putting all this gangster rap music from the 90s I don't know if I'm angry or something like that when I'm <laughs> going to work but like do they have any play into that like maybe I want to get like some more underground music and like broaden my horizons, but like do the record labels, given that they own most of the subscriptions and the rights, do they have any type of impact of like what music that I actually do get to listen to and get to show up in some of these automated playlists that they create? And if that's the case, do underground artists now get, you know, like get shelved, you know, like, I, I guess my question to you is like, when you're looking for new music, um, what platforms 
do you go to? So as far as streaming platform, I recently made the switch from Tidal to Spotify. Okay. Um, so not to have another back in my day moment, <laughs> but <laughs> during was was now considered as like the blog era of hip hop. Yeah. We used to have websites like Hot New Hip Hop, Dad right, Piff, right. and that's how like World Star got started and stuff like that. That's where we would find the up and coming artists. Right. Um, as far as right now, it's becoming harder and harder to find upcoming artists. But if you know where to look, in a lot of places, it's YouTube. Yeah. A lot of places, it's YouTube. Um, Reddit's a good source as well. Mm -hmm. You have these communities, even Twitter. You know, you have these communities that have mutual interests and they kind of share that mutual interest. Like, yeah. for example, one of my favorite hip hop groups now of all time, Flatbush Zombies, they have their own Reddit. Yeah. And it's nothing but Flatbush Zombies um, listeners in there. And that might, you know, just search in the internet, it might branch you off into something different. Yeah. You know, that is something similar to Flatbush Zombies. But I recently did switch to Spotify and I'm probably going to switch back. And why Why is that? Because I know, and I know Tidal is like the dark horse of the streaming services. Yeah. But Tidal focuses more on the listener. For example, when I open up Spotify, yeah, I've got some some hardcore hip hop stuff in there. Yeah. I might have one or two ransom or flatbush zombie recommendations. Yeah. Or something like that. But when I open up my title, mm -hmm. it's spot on. Yeah. And it's not telling like new music. It I open up Spotify and Taylor Swift still you know, gets in there. So, not saying that she's a bad artist or anything, right. but that's just not what I listen to. I I'll get a rec that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get a recommendation for like Lil Uzi Vert. We were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. the biggest listener of Lil Uzi Vert, but those artists, Lizzo, pops yeah. up on my stop Spotify sometimes. Yeah, I never see that from Tidal. Yeah, I see nothing but you know, like I said, Ransom. I, if the Flatbush Zombies drop next week, yeah. it's going to be as soon as I open up my title, that's number one. Do they give you recommendations on like other artists? They do. They do. And they create curated playlists, just like how Spotify yeah. does. And it kind of goes off the what you listened to yeah. uh, previously. Yeah. But it's a, I feel that it's a lot more geared towards the listener. Yeah, yeah. Rather so than... Who's paying to push this to your homepage? Right. And I think that. that's what's been difficult for me lately. I've listened to things that I know um, and that I'm used to and that I'm, I like. I haven't really been able to branch out to like different artists. One, I don't necessarily have the time to kind of go through various websites on Reddit and all of that stuff. I more would prefer for a song to pop up in my playlist. Like, yo, that was actually yeah. dope. I think another thing that I've been using, and honestly, um, is like some of the shows where you've been reviewing some of the albums. Yeah. Because like Flatbush Zombies, I'm going to be honest, if somebody's like, yo, you should check out Flatbush Zombies, like I would never listen to it. But it wasn't until like you put me on to one of those songs where I'm like, yo, this is actually dope. So like um, similar to like the concept of like Rotten Tomatoes for movies. If there was like something similar, which I kind of envision like your platform doing where you kind of go through albums and say like, yo, this was a dope verse or like this is a dope album and you do reviews. What I would usually do is just kind of like go to the album and be like, yo, this is actually a track that I would vibe with. But that's the thing is that now that we're so dependent on data and now that I'm hearing you talk about kind of this concept of like Spotify, I'm like, yo. Spotify for sure would be putting Lizzo and Taylor Swift on mine. And I ain't never listened to maybe like two. Oh, yeah. Sam Smith, new album, yeah. right on my homepage. Right. <laughs> um, and I would love for it to be able to just recommend different tracks. And sometimes it gets in the habit of just putting like the same music. Um, and maybe I'm just so deep into like the 90s, 2000s playlist. Um that like we don't really you know it's 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 done like they're like yeah. yo bro we 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 got no hope for you like this is your your thing. <laughs> the um, good thing about that though is there's probably '90s and 2000 artists that yeah. were considered underground that you still haven't heard today. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but like I know we're at time. Any thoughts for the people? Um, 
just before we wrap things up? Well, number one, subscribe to the channel. You'll get recommendations just like you're asking for. Right. We will do the work for you and review these albums and tell you if it's a good listener or not. And I can guarantee you we will be one of the most spot on channels on the Internet. Yeah, no, I, I but definitely I, again to that as a as an avid uh, music listener, maybe not so much now. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, I get a lot of my my top picks, um, and it's Sean and team that are going through this. It's not AI or ChatGPT or anything like that. <laughs> so uh, you could definitely trust in the fact that you got a human behind it, um, giving you that that personal connection that we talked about earlier in the show. But um, appreciate you having me on here. Looking to the next one. Um, and definitely got to get you back here to Vegas. Um, shout out to Sticky Paul Studios um, for allowing us to rent the space um, and, and hold the show down today. Definitely. And thank you for making the time out of your busy schedule. <laughs> we know one of the busiest men in Las Vegas, like I said before. And uh, appreciate you for coming on. I appreciate it. I'm still not and a little Uzi Vert, though. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, definitely special thanks to Sticky Paul Studios for you know, putting this whole thing together. And like I said before in the beginning, the hospitality has been wonderful. No, great. Well, we're out. <laughs>